Hello and welcome to NJ.com's live TV chat with Vicki Hyman. Today we'll be talking about the SAG and Golden Globe nominations and we'll also get Vicki's thoughts on HBO's series finale of the newsroom. Vicki, right off the bat I gotta get your take on some of these snubs uh, for this year's <laughs> award shows, particularly the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. um, should we be shocked that Homeland, Mad Men, Walking Dead, you know, these are all fan favorites. Uh, they were all pretty much snubbed. Well, The Walking Dead has never really gotten a whole bunch of awards. Um, I think they are pretty happy with the fact that they're the most popular television show on on, uh, on television. Mad Men, um, I think the Golden Globes just seem to have lost its taste for the Mad Men a couple of years ago. Um, it hasn't really racked up a lot of nominations. Actually, the Emmys um, aren't showing Mad Men a lot of love either and didn't give them a lot of didn't really give them any writing awards for the last couple of years, or even nominations, I think. Um, so, I mean, the Golden Globes, you know, they like shiny new things, especially in their ladies. Um, so I'm not terribly surprised about that. Right. All right. Well, let's talk about some other notable snubs. I, I, I definitely want to get your thoughts on. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he won the Emmy, I believe, for um, Sherlock. There is, that's, a really, it's a, that's a really strong category. I, I mean, it's, tell you. <laughs> especially because Benedict Cumberbatch is everywhere. Everyone mm -hmm. loves him. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems like these studios can't be in in the business enough of, of ben Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, okay, Maggie Smith, Downton Abbey. You know, she. I, I don't even know why Downton, Downton Abbey is still getting nominations because it has just gone so far downhill. It is just nothing more than a a mediocre soap opera at this point. And while I still love the Dowager. Uh, the Dowager Cont uh, Countess, um, you know, I just, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised I think Joanne Froggett, um, who plays um, uh, one of the maids, she got a nomination. I'm not really sure why anybody from that show is nominated anymore. I just don't think it's really that good when you consider everything else that's out there. Okay, what about uh, Curry Washington? You know, I, I am not a fan of Scandal anymore. I dropped it finally this season because it just got to be too much. Um, you know, I think I'm going to pick somebody from Shondaland. I'm very glad that they recognize Viola Davis, who is doing much better, much, much, much more subtle work. And her work isn't, isn't terribly subtle. It's pretty good, but it's so much more subtle than what Kerry Washington is being forced to do over on Scandal. Okay, well, what about John Hamm? We, we just spoke about Mad Men mm -hmm. a couple minutes back, but John Hamm has been doing some spectacular work mm -hmm. on Mad Men. It's almost a crime he's not nominated. It's I keep on saying it's just a really strong category. Um, I actually think that there's a, there's um, a couple people. I mean, I think Mad Men deserves to be up there. I think it's great. I think this last season was absolutely phenomenal. I would have loved to see Elizabeth Moss up there as well. I wouldn't have mind seeing Christina Hendricks. Um, I don't. Come poor on. John Hamm. Are we are we playing our little violins for John Hamm? Let's Come play on. some <laughs> violins for John Hamm. All right, uh, Modern Family. Um, Con consistently across the board, mm -hmm. uh, all these award shows, everyone has love for Modern Family, not this year and not at the Golden Globes. I don't understand that one. I mean, I know that um, a lot of people criticize the Emmys for always going to the same well again and again. I think Modern Family's won like five Emmys in a row or something. Um, but I think that this is one case where you shouldn't just abandon a show just because it's been around for a long time. It is still on its game. Maybe it is not quite white as nimble as it once was when it first started, but it is still funnier than 99% of the stuff that's out there. I think the show is continuing to evolve. It is still for me, because as funny as the day it debuted, mm -hmm. I watched it last night, hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, is it fair to say that The Affair stole a few nominations this year? I don't know about that. I mean, uh, one of the things that I love about um, the Golden Globes going after new things is that um, maybe a lot of people had heard about The Affair but didn't really know that much about it. There's another show that it also nominated called The Missing, which is on Stars. It's a British import, and they are both really wonderful shows. They're both doing really interesting things with narrative where it's playing out sort of over two time frames at the same time. The Affair takes it a step further because it's... Um, it's mostly it's the same story told from two different points of view, the two people who are in the affair. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to call him Jimmy McNulty just there. Dominic West yeah. and, um, and um, Ruth Wilson, who are both nominated, um, uh, play lovers on Montauk, um, different social strata. Um, there's uh, a lot of interesting things going on with um, uh, development out in Montauk and the summer people trying to keep their livelihoods going. Uh, not the summer people, the people who live there all year round after the summer people leave. There's a whole lot of interesting stuff going on there and there's like a murder mystery 
sort of trapped up in the middle of it, and it's really great. Were the, so it was pretty much deserved, in your opinion? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Boardwalk Empire. Anthony, Boardwalk season. Empire. Yes. Um, You're the expert. I am the expert. I'm not shocked that Boardwalk Empire didn't get any nominations. Um, but it did really uh, well at the SAGs. It always does well at the SAGs, and I think the reason why it does do well at the SAGs is because it's consistently a very well-acted show. Mm -hmm. Everybody on that show hits a home run almost every time they're on. Um, I'm not exactly shocked that it didn't get a nomination for the Golden Globes, um, but for me, still w one of my favorite TV series uh, almost ever, um, so no, I'm not shocked. I, but moving on, Clive Owen gets a nod for The Nick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, another historical drama. Uh, in your opinion, is that shocked or is it or is it warranted? I think it was pretty much warranted. Um, it's this gritty drama set um, around the turn of the century at a uh, Victorian hospital in New York City. Um, Clive Owen plays a cocaine addicted but brilliant surgeon. Um, it you know sort of towards the end of the run, it got a little bit one note and you know sort of he's playing that same thing over and over again. But he was still really intense and really great. And I'm also again happy that a show that might have gone a little bit under the radar gets a little more love. Right, and oddly, uh, we were talking about this before. Liev Schreiber gets a nod for Ray Donovan, uh, and while I love the show and I love what he brings to the role, I don't see how he could have been nominated. Why do you say that, Anthony? You're the one who watches it more than I do. Well, it's, he basically just pushes people around for 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. I like the show, but if you were going to put him up against John Hamm, mm -hmm. I would pick John Hamm. Well, I think uh, they're just tired of John Hamm then. Leif Shriver is the, is the shiny new pretty young thing, I guess. Or they were just tired of John Hamm's beard. Um, <laughs> Silicon Valley. Let's talk about Silicon Valley for a second. Um, Mildly funny, I think, but I, I don't get all the love that the show's getting. And to be nominated for, for Best Comedy, I, I just want to get your take on that. Well, I think they had a really solid season. I thought it was really funny throughout. Um, I don't know if it deserves to be up there. I might have wanted to see Parks and Recreation up there instead, um, which I'm really sad because I think this is going to be its last season. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's got one more chance next year. Um, but Silicon Valley, it was, it was a really good, solid Comedy. I don't think it was particularly groundbreaking, but um, it, you know, it was it was good. All right, uh, we'll move on to the anthology. Uh, the category is the anthology miniseries. It's miniseries or... and um, TV movie, which unfortunately I think allows for if you want to be put in as one of these new anthology series, American Horror Story, True Detective, Fargo. You know, between the between the Emmys and the Golden Globes, I'm not sure. I think you can put it wherever you want. Well, for me, the heavyweight matchup here is Fargo and True Detective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't tell you which one I would want to win on any given day because Fargo. I would probably, well, I would probably change my mind. I mean, you know, there's no doubt there was a lot great going on in True Detective, and for me, the most competitive category uh, of the entire um, awards show is going to be lead actor in the miniseries. I mean, Martin Freeman, mm -hmm. Billy Bob Thornton, Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, Mark Ruffalo. I mean. You could flip a coin, and any one of these guys would deserve to win. I, I wonder if um, True Detective and Fargo is going to be split. Although I think that most people for Fargo kind of edge towards Billy Bob Thornton. It is a much flashier role. role yeah, so I, I agree. Uh, and and like you said, you know, Golden Globes they, they love the young, they love the hip, and I, I mm -hmm. think uh, Fargo will squeak by. Um, moving on to the SAGs, uh, another year without a SAG nod for Lena Dunham. Uh, again, my violin comes out. Um, she's getting enough love everywhere else, uh, you know. And and I mean, it is it is a fair. I mean, it's a. I don't know. You know, I'm not. I'm. I don't hate watch girls. I just sort of watch girls now, and I think it actually can be kind of funny. I think Lena Dunham is good. I don't think the character is you know really shows that much you know nuance. Let's talk a second about Orange Is the New Black. Uh, it received the uh, comedy ensemble mm -hmm. nod, mm -hmm. but Taylor Schilling didn't. Mm -hmm. Yet her castmate did. Well, it's funny because I think you could look at so many women on that cast and they could just fill up a category all by itself. Um, Uzo uh, Duba, I don't know if I'm saying her name right, um, she won the Emmy for, I think, Guest Actress, and she is great. She plays a, uh, a, a inmate called Crazy Eyes who gets manipulated this past season by um, 
uh, a woman named V who comes to um, who comes to Danbury, played by Lorraine Toussaint, who was just terrifying, like one of those like syrup over steel kind of characters. Absolutely incredible. She could have been in there. Taylor Schilling's good, and you know, yeah, the the TV series is based on the book written by the character played by, you know, uh, but written by basically Taylor Schilling's character Piper. Um, but it's as much about anybody else in that prison as it is about her. All right. Well, I know we'll be talking about the awards mm -hmm. and uh, coming up in the next few months, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So uh, let's put a pin in all this. Uh, moving on. Vicky, I don't know anyone who hate watches the newsroom like you do. Hate uh, watches is too soft and fuzzy a word well, for what I do. We spoke at the start of the season. Uh, I just wanted to get your feelings on how you feel about the show with only one episode left because there's been a lot going on. Yes. Yes, there was a lot. Um, you know, why I hate the show? I hate the show because it makes me hate myself. I feel much the same way that Aaron Sorkin does about, um, here I am talking on you know, a live chat about new media. I feel much the same way, but he has his characters deliver these diatribes in the most condescending, obnoxious way that I hate them, which makes me just hate how I feel about it. And then, of course, all these straw characters he puts up, like B.J. Novak, who plays this billionaire who bought up ACN um, last, uh, in the last episode, over the last couple of episodes, is like the most horrible, disgusting, ridiculous caricature. And I just mm -hmm. wish that there could be more nuance between these, I use that word again, more nuance between people because it makes me hate everybody on the show so much. And, and I, I hate that because I like what Aaron Sorkin the, the core of what Aaron, Aaron Sorkin has to say. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. so aggravating to watch. I mean, I agree. I, he, Aaron can go off the rails once in a while. But for <laughs> me, I think there's a lot about the show that is fairly redeeming. Uh, Jeff Daniels, who did win an Emmy as Best Actor, is, still is a great presence on that show. Uh, you know, I, I, I do like what this show is trying to do. Uh, just perhaps the, the mechanism by which Aaron Sorkin is choosing to do this just isn't working. You mean his script? <laughs> uh, well, perhaps. Uh, you his know, writing? <laughs> and, you know, we, on Sunday night we said goodbye to news director Charlie Skinner. In the most dramatic, ridiculous way possible. And that song that came on after it, Oh Shenandoah, like we're supposed to feel this like, you know, we're supposed to like break down into tears over death. And yes, I feel bad that Charlie died, but it was so abrupt and ridiculous. And that song with it was so toned up. I was, really, Anthony. I was sad when Charlie you, had your eyes were wet. Really, it was sad. Um, but I, you know, I will say this: I was very angry at HBO the next day. Um, I watched the episode a day later, and you know, you really have to start staying off of social media and Facebook and, and all this stuff because what did I see in my newsfeed from HBO? In memoriam, be a newsman, R.I.P. Charlie Skinner. <sighs> like, <laughs> come on. Um, all right, before we go, I want to get your three predictions. How is the newsroom going to end? Sunday well, my night? predictions are what I want, because what I want is probably different from what's going to happen. Okay, tell me what you want. Okay, so it turns out that the um, rape victim secretly recorded the incredibly patronizing and wrong-headed Don and shows the tape to Sloane, who realizes what a tool he is and dumps him, and we never hear from Don again. Okay? I wouldn't mind that. Go ahead. Number two. <laughs> we have Maggie and Jim, who finally get together. Like, who cares? They finally have sex and realize, you know, totally not into you. They break up and never see each other again. And finally, B.J. Novak's character orders Will to live tweet Charlie's funeral. And Will gets so upset he drop kicks BJ Novak off the ACN outdoor lounge and we never hear from any of these people ever again. I love Where that. I, I love the last one. I know you know a little bit about live tweeting a funeral. Oh yes, I do. Um, all right, that wraps it up for us. Be sure to catch us next Friday on NJ.com for our next TV chat. Vicky, say goodbye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>